Hello, today we're going to look at the Art App Sumo Paint. So I'm going to go to S U M O P A I N T dot com. When you get to Sumo Paint, you are going to click Try Online and then you're going to click Open, and that will bring you to a blank canvas. We are going to look at some general tools and it's going to be a really brief description. There's a lot of things you can do with this app and there's a lot of things, a lot of things we will not cover, but we will look over some of the basics. So first thing right here is the ink tool. If I click on that, there are three options on the top. So first one is color, opacity, and diameter. Diameter is going to be how wide your brush is. So right now we have it at a 20. If I take the diameter and move it up to 139, it's going to be much wider than the 20. The next we're going to look at is color. So if I click on color, I can change the color right here. Let's say I want a blue and then I'm going to click here wherever I want that exact color to be from. I'm going to click on OK. Another option is you can change the color over here, or you can choose this tool bar heading right here that says colors, and there's a lot of different colors that are already pre-selected. OK, so I'm going to show you the color. I'm going to just go on top of there. Again, I have a wider diameter. Opacity is going to be the translucent quality of the paint or whatever tool you're using. So if you have a large opacity, right now it's at 100, that means it's not going to be see-through at all. It's going to be a very thick color. If I take that opacity and I move it down to 20, 18, we'll go 18, um, you will be able to see through the color and it'll be more of a light layer. Okay, so you can see how when I took my finger off the mouse, the color went to 18% opacity. The cool thing about having low opacity is that you are able to layer up color like you would with watercolors or um, colored pencils or things like that in real life. So if I take another swipe across here, you can see that where there's one layer, it's lighter than where there's two layers. Same thing where there is one layer, it's lighter than where there's two layers, which is lighter than where there are three layers. So that's kind of fun to be able to build up color that way. Next thing we're going to look at is the paintbrush tool. So the paintbrush tool has similar things up here. Um, they also have different colors or different shapes of brushes. So I'm going to choose the brush and I can choose a different pattern. There are always options over here for when you're choosing something, but we're not going to worry about those today. So I chose a snowflake right now, clicking over here. The snowflake is very tiny, so I want it to be a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna bring the diameter way up to 133. I can make those snowflakes. If I wanna change the color, again, I can change it here. I can change it down here. I can change it up here. There are a lot of different options. Okay, so the cool thing about the stamp tool is that if I click it once, it's going to give me a low opacity um, of the color. You'll be able to see through it and it is pretty subtle. But if I hold my mouse in one spot and click it multiple times, you'll get the full opacity of that color. Another thing you can do with this tool, with this brush, just like any other brush, is you can paint with it. So you can go back and forth and cover in your spaces. Okay. Um, the pencil tool is going to be very similar to other things we talked about, so we're going to skip on that. We have a gradient background fill. So I'm going to click on that. You can choose how you want your background to look, and then you can choose your color scheme. So I'm going to click on this. And let's say I want to use this light green. Oh, no, I want to do the sunset one. Okay, then you can go through and you can choose how much of one color you want to see. And you can also change that color. So right now this is almost on black. So I'm going to change that up by bringing it to a yellow again. Okay, and then I want there to be more yellow. So I'm going to 
I make these kind of scoot in a little bit closer. And I want that one to be a little lighter. So I'm going to choose right here and lighten that up a little bit. Okay. So now when I go on here, I can pull, click and pull, and it will give me that. I can also choose a different kind of gradient and work with it that way. Okay. Some of the other things, we have text tools, so you can put text in there. All of these shape tools work pretty much the same way. Um, it's a lot like the gradient background. So if I choose one of the tools, the line color is going to be the color outside the shape. The fill color is going to be the color inside the shape. The line diameter is going to be how wide we want the outline to be. So I'm just going to show you that real quick. So line color is purple, line diameter is 36, which is pretty wide, and fill color is black. So let's say I want the line color to stay purple. I want it to be very subtle, though, so I'm going to bring it all the way down to 10, 8. And then the fill color, let's say I want white. I can also change that so that it is a different pattern. Okay, so then when I go in here, you can see that the purple line is a lot thinner, and then the inside is white. Another tool you're probably familiar with is the paint bucket tool. So the paint bucket tool, if I click right here, that will just fill in a large area. So I'm going to change my color on there and just fill in some spaces. Let's say I wanted to take a color from here, but I don't know where it is on here. I can use the eyedropper tool. So I have to move my stuff, there you go, okay. I'm going to click on my eyedropper tool, select the color that I want. Oh, maybe that doesn't work how I thought. Let me see. That's a good way to show you how to fix mistakes. So I'm going to go to Edit, Undo, and then that's going to get rid of that stuff that I don't really want over there. Okay, another way that you can fix mistakes is if you choose your eraser. And then you can go over top of something and you can pull it out. Um, you can also use those stamp tools that we did before as an eraser and add some fun stuff into your project. Okay, so this is going to bring all of you to my favorite tool that we have. First, I want to kind of clean up the background. I don't want all this stuff on here anymore. Okay, so my favorite tool is the symmetry tool. So this is the symmetry tool, the one that kind of looks like a flower. I'm going to choose a color. Okay, so the symmetry tool is going to be connected to the word symmetrical. So it's going to be the same on one side as it is on the other. So right now there's six symmetry points. So when I draw something, there are five other ones that are going to show up. You can choose to change your brush shape. You can choose to change your diameter. So right now I have six. If I did my diameter at 80 and I go out, it's going to fill up quite a bit of that page. You can also mess with the opacity and you can mess with the color on that. You can go up, let's see, we'll do 18 symmetry points. And if we do our diameter really large, what's going to happen? And I click and go out, and you're really going to hardly see any of it. Um, but that's a fun tool to use. Last thing, we also have our different lines that we can use. I need to change the color, otherwise you won't be able to see what I'm doing. Okay, so this, I'm going to click. I'm going to move my line, and it's always going to keep a straight line. So I'm going to move my line and then let go, and then it'll leave that in that spot. So this is fun. Like if you're doing like an optical illusion or an op art piece, these can be very helpful. Okay, so we're going to leave you with that for today. Um, again, there are so many other things you can do with this art website, but here are just a few basics. Thank you.